All right, now let's go ahead and move on to our next reuse strategy. And that is our variables. All right, so variables are basically a placeholder for a text or graphics uh, that will be inserted at the time of publication. A very common example of that is a variable called product where we insert this variable product into our content and then we decide at the time of publication which of our product names we would like to be published in its place. Okay, So a variable looks just like this. It's a piece of text that has an open and closed caret on either side of it. The variables are created in the administrator module. They are a task that our designers or administrators would create, um, but the usage of variables is for our authors. All right, so let me go ahead and just show you what variables look like. Let me go back to my X1000 user guide here. Now, X1000 is actually a product. All right, so we've got X1000 displaying in multiple locations inside of our book. And we've got multiple products in this library. If you think about it, we've got the X2001 and the X3001. And if you were to put the contents of our user guide together, you'll see that there's a lot of similarities going on between the X2001 content and the X1000 content except for the product name. Okay, so if we've got content that's the same, except the product name is different, then we can use a variable for the product name and then tell author it what we want the product name to be when we go to publish this document. All right, so our administrators have created variables in the administrator module. I'll show you here all the possible variables that come with these libraries. So all variables you'll see have this uh, format of open caret, closed caret, and then they've got text in between those carrots. Now these variables will mean something to you. Your team will have set these up for a particular reason. All right, so here's that product variable. We'll go ahead and use that as an example. Now to insert a variable into our contents, what we can do is just simply type the word in with our open caret and our closed caret, and author it will know what to do with that text. All right, we can type it in just like we've done there, or we can go up to variable, insert, and then select it from the list. So if we don't have the variable name memorized, we can just insert it from the list of variables. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. So everywhere where I see X1000, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the product variable instead. And let's do a couple more here. I suppose I could actually cheat now that I think about it and use the find and replace all if I'd like to. But let's go ahead and change a couple of these topics here. All right, so instead of actually referring to the absolute product name, what I've done is inserted a variable in its place. All right, so now that I've inserted the variable, I would like to assign a value to it. All right, so the possible assignments for this product variable would be the various names that I have for all of my products. Now when it comes to assigning 
a product variable, you have some choices. All right. You can choose to assign the value at the book level or at the individual topic level. If you assign the value at the book level, then every topic that has a variable inside of it will use that variable assignment. If you assign the value at the individual topic level, then for that particular topic, any book level assignment is ignored and the topic objects assignment takes precedence. Okay, so topics will trump book level assignments. So let's go ahead and assign a value at the book level. Show you how to do that. So I'll select the book set assignment. I'm setting the assignment on the product variable. And here's my possible options. The X1000, the X2001, or the X5000. Let's go ahead and select X2001 as my book level assignment. So that means every topic in my book will now use that value. Unless that topic has its own assignment on it. Remember, topics trump books. All right, so let's say that for this particular topic, I don't want to use the book level assignment. I want it to have its own assignment. So I'll go ahead and select that topic, select product, and select my value. In this case, it's X5000 and hit OK. All right. So now what's going to happen when I publish this book is everywhere where that variable has been used, it is now going to be replaced by the text X2001 or X5000 uh, depending on the topic. So any topic that did not have its own assignment will have the X2001 assignment and then our specific topic here will have the X5000 assignment. So in this way, you can choose whether or not uh, you would like to make an absolute reference to your product names or have it be managed by a variable instead. Let's go ahead and go to View Output. Now if I go down to my Table of Contents, you'll see that for all of those topics that I used a variable inside of, I now have that different variable assignment displaying here. All right, so if I go out to this X2001 description, you're going to see that it says X2001 in all of the locations where I have used that variable. And in my other topic where I made the specific topic assignment, I'm using that topic assignment variable value instead. All right, so your variables are basically just placeholders for a value that you will assign at the time of publication. All right, and they are actually created in the administrator module. And when we get into the administrator module, I will actually show you how those variables get created. Do you have different types of variables that you can work with? Uh, what we saw was a list of values type variable where you can choose a value from a list. Other types of variables are text-based variables where you can just insert a free text into the, the uh, variable assignment. You can also reconcile a variable with a graphic if you'd like to. And you can also use a set of variables that come by default with the library. They're called system variables. System variables will actually pull information from AuthorIt or from your machine itself and insert that information. Let me show you an example here. Let's open up any one of these topics. Okay, insert, there we go. So all of these 
variables that start with the prefix SYS. These are system variables. They come with every author at library. And they will actually pull content uh, from the library itself, from the topic that you're in, or even from your system, and then enter it into your topic. For example, sysldate is system long date. Syssdate is system short date. These would pull the date from your system at the time of publication and place that inside of your document. All right, so this is all just system-based information here. Now let me show you an example of some text-based variables. Let's go over here to Human Resources, Employment Contract, Employment Agreement. Now this particular book has a special set of text-based variables assigned to it where when you go to publish the book, you're actually prompted to enter a variable value. So you can set up your variables so that you are prompted at the time of publication to enter a value. All right, now notice when I click in the value field here, there's no drop-down. That's because these are text-based variables. So you can give your authors the option of what value you would like assigned to that variable. All right, now before we publish this book, let me cancel that here. Just want to show you what's going on inside of this book. This is an employment agreement. It gets published each time you hire on new staff. It's basically a form, except there's some information inside of it that uh, may be different for each person that you hire, such as the start date, the salary, let's see here, the position, for example. So basically everything else is a form except for that information that is specific to this particular new hire. All right. So let's go ahead and publish this book again. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in my values here. I'll give 60 days notice. I'll be very generous. Of course, I'm going to be CEO, and my salary is $1 million. Severance, uh, lifetime pay, start date never, vacation, 365 days. All right. So these values will then get assigned in place of those variables uh, when I go to publish this document. All right. So everything about the document is the same except for those little conditional variables that we've added throughout this book. Let's do a search on my name here. All right. So now we've basically reconciled those variables with this text value. All right, so when we get into the administrator module, I'll show you how to create the variables, show you how to set up the prompt uh, before publish variables as well. That's a very handy feature uh, to get familiar with. All right. Now some other things to know about variables. When you're working with text-based variables, you have an option of up to 2,000 characters that you can add as your text assignments, so they can be rather large. Um, each one of your list of values assignments can be 255 characters, so you're not just limited to one or two words here or there. You can basically type in entire paragraphs if you had to. The thing to really keep in mind is that the variables are great for repetitive but changeable text and graphics. Okay, basically placeholders for a value that you want to set at the time of publication.